center of mass. Let's see where I put that definition. Well, it's the mass itself. I just was talking about the vector. What's your vector, Victor? David? David's your vector? <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were talking to David. I'm sorry. What was that? No matter. I'll just mess around. <laughs> you asked what? You were um, asking what the vector was? No, I was saying I was relating the center of mass as the where the, what the vector would be as far as the force of gravity. Mm. I mean, if the mass had a force to direct to the center, uh, the way I think about it is you could pulverize the mass, turn it into powder, blow it in the wind, and all of its force would be distributed among the wind. It would you know, be distributed so could... among each individual particle. Yeah, so uh, it's like the medium would have so much more potential to have the force than the mass itself, you know, by that, you know, picture, since it could just blow it in the wind and there would be even greater forces in the medium. I have to describe how um, stars are formed. Stars? Yeah, the, the, the debris of space, right, comes together. Once enough masses of hydrogen is, is there, it starts a chain reaction called fusion. I reject that cosmology. I don't think gravity can form stuff without a creator. Oh, well, what if the creator wanted it that way? I need evidence of stuff forming balls by gravity in orbits here in my everyday life. Without so, that a small scale proof, I can't go to the big scale of stars and believe it. Uh, you got to be careful with that, though, because if you reject it and it, it's true and it's from your creator, you just rejected your creator. I uh, didn't say nothing about that yeah. in the Bible. He said, yeah, he he said, well, he said it, together, not if, you him, if you deny him, that's the only unforgivable sin. It's the opposite. You can't do that. The Bible also Gravity. doesn't have like cars and TVs and and computers and all that, so do we have to reject those things? That's my mom. That's, that's the sin of man there. You can't have Well, well Leela, uh, you're making a false dichotomy where you can't even question science now because you're saying you have to reject all of science when the only part that we want to reject is the stuff about the shape of the earth. So you're kind of making a false oh, dichotomy no, no, there no. to keep it from being questioned at all. No, you said gravity is not in the Bible, and I use like five examples of stuff that isn't in the Bible that we can accept here on Earth, like computers, cars, TVs, cell phones, wallets. Not if you're, what, not if you're a particular Earth. denomination of Christian, such as. But I well, I don't know if there are any Luddites. Oh, I didn't say anything. To... It, it it blanked out after like, after like. Bible doesn't mention those five or six things that I just said. Why do we have to accept those things is also true. Well, uh, Leela, it's still a false dichotomy being I have to accept, you know, everything else are throwable. The only thing that I'm criticizing is the science about the shape of the earth, that's all. But why? Because I don't see uh, that balls is not all you reject, in my life. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you would have if you reject the science of you know, of uh, the globe, like that that there is a globe, the science that proves that, then you've basically rejected pretty much all of basic physics, which means that you've rejected even throwing a ball. No, that's not necessarily true. I do still subscribe no, to the true. ether and that molecule. You reject atoms, which means you reject chemistry. You reject, I reject most of fundamental physics. I reject that they take on that ball form. I think that it can take multiple mm -hmm. forms, possibly a ball or something else. But the concept of an atom is still there. What shape it takes is still, you know, questionable. There's, no, there's very few times in nature where a flat disk is kind of like the natural state of something. Like, it, it would truly have to be magical or a miracle. 
that your god produced if the earth is indeed a flat disk if if somebody could prove to me that the earth is flat i know i would become religious overnight i would definitely Absolutely. i would there, definitely there, believe in in a god there would have to that would be one of the proofs right like even beyond writing in the sky like i am god like you, you can question that as like a hallucination or something but like if the earth is indeed a flat disk i mean it would need some sort of powerful creator of some sort, or some powerful thing that is un under not understandable by humans, anyway, to make it so. Well, what is between these these pebble balls? Basically, atomism says that atoms form these pebble balls that are next to each other. What is in the space between these balls? Vacuum, nothingness, what? energy, ether, what? That That shows you right there. See it? In the chat. It's called space. Is space nothing or something? Obviously something, or it wouldn't exist. That's why I call it an ether. Because for something to exist and have substantiality, <laughs> it has to be something like a water, a fluid, or something. Um, it's, it's space, and it's related to time. Um, the, you would have to talk to somebody that's that's really deep into that sort of uh, quantum a long time, stuff like that. Quantum theory, but he doesn't want to check it out. So, uh, yeah. just, how they stole the ether? Fee. Well, well, yeah. well, you have to you have to, you have to learn about it to find that out, Lemon. Otherwise, you're just making shit up right now. Fall. You just made. That up, Lemon, because you haven't. You told me yesterday you haven't checked out quantum field theory, and then now you're saying that they stole the ether. You're saying that without any knowledge about, of it. That's basically, about space time, space time, basically a lie. That's basically a lie. That's basically a lie. No one said anything about space time, Lemon. I said quantum field theory. You would know that if you weren't talking while I was talking. I did say space. I already know I this stuff. Time as well. I watched the fool on the hill. I watched the documentary. It talks about this in depth. I'll put it in the chat. Sorry, I interrupted you. Please continue. Uh, what? What? I mean, would it? I mean, it wouldn't surprise me that an argument from ignorance is all you have. I mean, that's all you have. The documentary is right here. You don't have to learn everything to know something. That's true about what you're talking about to know what you're talking about. Einstein didn't talk about quantum field theory because Einstein worked with space-time. Okay, Quantum field theory was the thing I was telling you about yesterday. The thing I told you about every day that you talk about ether and I tell you that that doesn't make sense um, and that it encompasses what you think ether is space but you don't give it any ether. It. and instead you claim something that you don't know anything about has stolen your ether. I don't have to know so, anything about it. I so, uh, space time sounds a lot like the ether. They weren't okay. talking about space in those terms. They talked space about it in time. terms of ether. I'm not saying space time at all. I didn't say that. I, I said that specifically to say I'm not talking about that. I told you about quantum field theory, which has nothing to do with space time. Yeah, but space time has to be curved, right? So how how do the, how do the, how does stuff curve? How does nothing curve? How does a vacuum curve? It would have that, to have proper. The curve. It's not, it's not nothing. We said what it was. Well, you got it. You got that curved space time. So we, hold on a minute. Ignorance being shown right here. Oh my God. The ignorance that's being shown is the basis of your philosophy, atomism, which basically uh, says matter is separated from on. other matter hang by vacuum no. space. Hang on. Your Lemon. ignorance of the basis of your philosophy. Lemon was saying something. For fuck's sake. Uh, Lemon, you missed what Kosho was talking about. He's talking about quantum field theory, which has nothing to do with space time. Sure, it does. Well, no, yeah, no. Does. In, in what Kosho is talking about, it's not. It's about the fields themselves. Uh, and what where the, did the fields field? exist? If you didn't have space time, I mean, it, when, it, it just trust me. They're not. They're not. They're not related. So, so someone's talking about quantum field theory and what Lemon's talking about, and something existing in the space. That's different than talking about space time bending. I so think you're full of crap, concepts. and you know that the ether and space time here's are the main thing. Here's, here's, the fourth, here, here's the fourth grade sentence for that. Space time tells matter how to move. Matter tells space time how to curve. There you go. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm still waiting for. I, I've asked you multiple times, and I, I don't and think I, I understand get the Quan. same the same answer again uh, from you, Lemon. But but I'll just check and see. Can you show me an experiment with a positive result demonstrating the existence of an ether? Yes, no. Is an ether do What about? about to, can you tell me Isn't what geometry do out? Can you tell me what geometry duality is? Isn't, isn't ether just like the sun? Like the sun just burns? Mm. Like... No. No? No, ether okay. doesn't mean anything. No, ether is just some made-up nonsense. Well, I mean, they, they thought it might help describe something. I forget anymore, but... but no, that light had to move through a medium. And... It doesn't. Yeah, I mean, so they may have a medium. Lemon, Lemon Bird said to me yesterday that when you do a handstand, the reason that the blood goes to your head is not because of gravity, it's because of the ether. <laughs> ether? Yeah. And he hasn't, there has not been a single, solitary, positive, uh, non-null result showing the existence of an, of an ether. So all these uh, uh, experiments that, that people who believe in the ether appeal to uh, are actually null results. So... Uh, I'll post the. Uh, uh, these are the various experiments. Um, none of the experiments were actually within. Um, they, if the ether existed, uh, they 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 didn't get the result they were expecting. Essentially, assuming that the ether existed. So the conclusion is either ether exists, or the Earth is moving. Uh, so what? Never what exactly... able to demonstrate that the ether exists? Well, the, the Earth's moving because of momentum, right? Like it's just—it's mm -hmm. never going to start spinning because it's. No, that's. that's it, it will eventually stop spinning. Yeah, days will become longer, but in the in the in the time of space, it's not like forever for us. It'll be forever till it ends before us. Mm, well, yeah, we'll be gone long before the Earth stops spinning. Yeah, yes, yeah. but the Earth will eventually stop spinning. But the like, Earth doesn't day, it's spin. still spinning through space, like, infinitely. The ether spins over the Earth. The Earth does not spin. Sure it does. The Earth is on pillars on top of a watery deep. It does not move. It is fixed and immovable. <laughs> Don't forget like so. Show me a pillar. Show me watery deep. Maybe we could find the pillars with the gravimetric anomalies. There are places where gravity has little anomalies where it seems to work a little differently here and there. Gra Maybe that's where the pillars that, are going please, further please, down. Please, please. Grav what do you say? Gravitational anomalies. Yeah, where the gravity seems to pull a little differently, a little bit more, a little bit less, or whatever. Does that all over the planet? Yeah, I mean, that's just the ma different masses on the Earth. Like, different yeah, makeup of the Earth. Pillar is. Yeah, maybe that's where our pillar is. Oh, how many okay, pillars? There. That's, of course. I don't uh, know. I should assume that, of course. Uh, you're going to go to the four pillars, aren't you? Where are the bottom of the pillars, Lemons? I don't know. In the aether. I don't think you can go all the way down. Eventually the water gets so thick you can't go down. Thick. I heard somebody talk about in the vision that there's a second ocean under the ocean. Maybe that's the where the pictures are or something. No, there's just cold pockets of brine. It's all that it is. It just looks like different water, that is just brine. That's all it is. It means it's heavily salted water. Maybe a kraken or two down there, maybe a siren or a mermaid or some demon Bri from hell. Brine is actually yeah. used to cool down There's stainless steel tanks that hold wine. Watch out for the kraken. Release the kraken. Huge, uh, monstrous creatures. Uh, I mean, you can go on and do the cracking if you want, but I'm not into that, sorry. If you're into the wine stuff, then it would be uh, maybe a finger. the corking. <laughs> yeah, but also don't forget NZXT actually make a Kraken AIO water cooler for your CPU. Uh, I've been injured. Oh, I've got a crack in my butt. <laughs> Release the crack in. Oh, jeez, don't, don't. You'll create ether. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I'm uh, it's it's a rogue cloud of ether. Speaking of, speaking of rogue ether, here's Lael. <laughs> speaking of shit jokes, here's Chris Lael. Yeah, but at least my jokes are still better than yours and Lewis's. No, uh, your jokes are here to save the day. Uh, your jokes are here to save the day, Chris. Da, 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 da. These fucking butt crack jokes. Joking, if that was here, is I'm going to leave. Yes. This is highbrow humor here. This is highbrow humor. Yeah, I mean, this is not your average right. You gotta say butt crack in. I think my brows butt are crack. Crack. my eyes. We're seriously cracking up this. Release the crack in. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Can you crack that open? <laughs> <laughs> You and your, you and your chit chat. I wish Kosho was here. He could lighten the mood. That Kosho flow. Kosho. Uh, there, Curve Water. There's a scalar box for you. The scalar box. Well, if it's going to be that kind of a party, I'm going to dip my scalar. Interesting. What's this supposed to be a scalar of? My Kraken. Well, it's the Kraken. David, are you uh, posting pictures of stuff that you might not be able to explain again? Yeah. Yes, he is, Lemon. I understand. Just look at it. It explains itself. Hang on. Are you reading Wikipedia or physics.org? David, I need help explaining this stuff. I don't know what? physics. Please Car help. Curve water, water asked for an explanation there. I gave it to him. You need but the, common, the, common science. But it doesn't really explain anything. I have more questions now than I did before. What does that help explain? I don't know yet. I'm still thinking about it. Route from America to Russia. That's what it explains. I mean, David, if you really studied, you could be a real flat earther, you know? Not just posting, you know, a bunch of shit. Or like Lemonberg does. Well, we're talking about scalar gravity because to have atmospheric pressure, you can't have, you can't have gas pressure. A scalar gas pressure. See, that's what the claim is, is that the atmosphere is a scalar uh, gas pressure system, so you would have to have scalar gravity. I don't see why you wouldn't have to have that. To have pressure, you need to have a container. You need to have something to press on. Gravity has never contained anything, and the gas does not contain itself. Hey, that's well, temp te temperature does that because it's a force, but I don't know. You got scalar, you got scalar okay, temperature. Then show me a temperature glass. Show me a temperature wall. Show me a temperature house that is solid enough to contain its inhabitants. Until you can, I don't even know what you're talking about. Hey, Something else that's solid has the temperature. Lemon Bird, I got a quick question for you. Would you agree with me that a gas tank is a container? Yes. Do air molecules of gas leave the, ever leave that container? I would say no, maybe one or two, but I, I don't think. I know that, but, but whether one or two or 20 or 80 or 100 leave or not, at least some are leaving that containment, right? So it's leaking out before it gets to your engine. True? Uh, yes. So why... Why cannot our atmosphere also be a container that kind of acts the same way except more loosely? Well, you need to have a container to keep it concentrated. Otherwise, all of the stuff would eventually leak out and it wouldn't be concentrated enough to do any work or be useful. Gravity. Gravity never contained anything. Gravity did. It does. It's still doing it right now. 
I've never seen gravity contain anything. Actually, if it wasn't gravity, your body probably wouldn't contain itself very have a hard time. This is just some pagan antichrist cosmology that makes planets <laughs> with aliens on them and stuff like that. That's the what that's it. There you go. You figured it out. And also in the Bible it says that it's flat and motionless. This gravity cosmology is used to make atheists out of people. It doesn't say that it is motionless. The earth is fixed, stable, and does not move. It's on pillars. Perfect. But I don't know if you. It I, doesn't move from whose perspective? Because I can definitely not move the Earth. I, I'm not sure about if from I'm God's anybody, perspective. I, I'm not sure if I told you this or not, there, um, Lemon. But um, most things in the Bible that are that that can be associated with facts are are completely wrong. So just so you know, the Bible has history, prophecy. Actual places, actual people. It's I, real. I actually the word of God is real. With, I agree with Damon, but I don't agree with necessarily his premise because the Bible isn't supposed to be a science book. The people of those days, two or three thousand years ago in the Middle East, weren't worried about the science we are today. Even what it says about. Um, period, but I don't, I don't knock them for that. They were Chris, living the best so they do you live. believe the Bible to be true then? That it's the word of God? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, I believe it's true, but I don't think it talks about scientific things like yeah. rockets. Well, and God would know that at some point where the humans would be scientifically minded, right? So then you would think that God would at least reveal something within the book knowing that it's him and not, you know, just a bunch of humans writing stories. By putting you know something in there that we would discover later on, like maybe like the thousand decimal place of fire or something like that. But what, right? Wait, wait, wait. Why would he reveal a cell phone to a person that doesn't even know electronics at that scale or for the like future, maybe electronics because, at all for back for the, then? For future generations to know that it's but the word of God. People once, of once, that once, day wouldn't have any concept of that. Why? Why would right, he? But, need it, but the book is to talk to, to people in concepts they didn't understand. But Chris, it's supposed to be a timeless message for all human beings to come. People that are going to be, you know, hundreds of generations after the original humans that were around to witness all the miracles, right? Jake, so you sound really passionate about this topic, man. So I'm just now I'm curious to know from Chris, why oh, wouldn't getting more passionate the Bible so that like our present modern day generation would know, wow, this is really the word of God. I mean, look, he talks about. I guess you have to ask God. God uh, only a God would know. I guess you have to ask God. He's the only person that would know that answer. So, yeah, it just doesn't make hey, any hey, sense. Hey, Jay. Instead, you have a newborn God, kid. If, if you God is real and can reveal answers, stuff, would He reveal astrophysics to a kid that can't even understand one plus one yet? It's supposed to be a timeless book, though. So even but, if that, if even but if that's the generation, not the of the point. Time, the point is, God reveals stuff to the understanding of the people that He's speaking to. Like of all the things that He told us as ways to live our life, why didn't He tell us about the germ te theory of disease? That would have been very helpful for the germ me. theory of disease. Well, is probably because he didn't know. Oh, well, in Leviticus, He tells you how to not get sick over and over again. I mean. Maybe you didn't say washing use your germs, washing. but it did tell you to wash your hands. And also, the germ theory is being did challenged. You really say to wash your hands? Yeah, of course. Go read Leviticus. It's all over the place. No, Lemon. The germ theory is not being challenged. Yes, it is. Back in the Spanish influenza days, they were rubbing snot and uh, sputum into other people from infected uh, Spanish influenza people and they weren't getting sick with Spanish influenza. They were having them close to each other, talking on each other, breathing on each other, and they weren't getting sick. That's a big what challenge. About the, right what about there. all the people that actually died from Spanish influenza? Not they said the people, people died from the vaccine. What about the people that died? Vaccines. There was no vaccine for Spanish flu. They were already vaccinating them against other sicknesses. Okay, show me the show me the vaccine for Spanish flu. Show it to me. No, that's another question. You're asking for the vaccination for Spanish flu. They were getting vaccinated against other diseases, and they were calling the diseases that resulted Spanish influenza. That is the link. No, that's a lie. 
that's a flat out lie, Lemon. Put on top of that the electromagnetic signals that they were putting up with the telegraph wires and other stuff, and you have a lot of poisoning on a cellular level with these people. Yeah, and what about the people that died Seems from legit. it that didn't have telegraph poles? People were dying from the vaccines. So what about the people that died that didn't have the vaccines? People were dying from the vaccines. Yeah, and what about the people that didn't die? They didn't take the vaccines. What about the people that did die that didn't take the vaccines? I don't know. You tell me. This is an alternative uh, see, hypothesis nah, hang saying on. that you viruses answers, and bacteria are made by the You had answers to the other two athletes. questions, but you couldn't answer the third. You can't even that answer it. You're, you're a liar. looking for a gotcha point. You're just looking no, for justification to throw out what I say. You're the one... You're the one with the information. You don't even know yourself. You're just looking for a gotcha question. You don't even know yourself. No, it's not about Look, a gotcha. Look to the terrain theory of disease, dude. It's an alternative to the germ theory saying that your body makes these viruses and bacteria as cleanup crew for uh, cellular damage. But they don't. But why couldn't you answer the third question? You answered the first you and you couldn't answer the, the third. Gotcha no, question. because they follow. It's a conversation. They, those questions follow from one to the other to the other. All it is is seeing how far your knowledge goes and when you start bullshitting. It's not about Look into the terrain theory. It's the fact that you lied about the first two. Uh, what were the different vaccines prior to 1900? Uh, prior to 1900, I think they had pertussis, what, whooping cough, stuff like that. Um, what? Scarlet fever. I'm thinking before like 19, 10, 1910, 1920, it's probably stuff like that. Before 1900, the only vaccines were smallpox, rabies, typhoid, cholera, and plague. Before 1900, Spanish flu was around 1918. Mm -hmm. So how how close to 1900 is 1918? You said before. That's 18 years before, dude. Come on. About 100 years, Chris. <laughs> but did they have oh, a vaccine for... Okay. Before... Didn't sound like a flu vaccine in there. Vaccines in general appear to be a form of blood poisoning. They don't really confer a whole lot of immunity. The immunity that they do confer appears to be temporary. And it looks like it's basically a bunch of cellular junk that your body has to spend the next couple of years detoxifying from. Did you get you that from GreenMommy.com? No, he's watched Plandemic. Uh. It's just part of man's liar. myth that they um, uh, eradicated disease with their artificial interventions. It's man's religious reliance on himself and his humanism that's making them take so much pride in vaccines, despite the fact that the graphs show that the diseases were already on the decline before the vaccines even came around by it sanitation, general hygiene, and nutrition. Quick question, Lemon. Why was it in 2000 that the U.S. actually determined that measles had been eradicated, and yet only last year... There was a massive outbreak. People I mean, are getting measles from the vaccine. No, the it's vaccine. Because, people, because people stopped taking the vaccine. It's clear. It's clear cut. The, the data shows the moment all these people stopped taking the measles vaccine, measles came back, even though it was eradicated in the US. That's just a technical definition. They, they mm -hmm. can't consider it eradicated if they have, like, one case in every 100,000 or something like that. No, it's when you have zero cases over a period of time. Wait, are you trying to tell me the Black Plague or the Black Death is eradicated? Death the Black Plague, um, no, the alternate about me. Don't make a non sequitur, Lyle. The alternative hypothesis. Over when when a d disease goes away over a period of time, it's eradicated. So I said, "Are you telling me the black plague is eradicated?" I'm being facetious there. I the thought you're supposed to get measles. It's all part of growing up. Someone gets measles. You go to their house so you can catch measles, so you can have it as a kid and take care of it. That's chicken pox, or not the measles. Oh, well, sir. Thanks. They were called pox parties. 
Or you can just not can get kill it. you. The alternative explanation for that is while your body is detoxing, it is off-gassing uh, corrupted proteins, which signal the other people to mount an immune response. Okay, but the thing so is here's a the question. Why is an infant detoxing themselves? With your body's detoxification reaction primarily with the viruses and bacteria made secondarily. So why would an infant need to detox oil. themselves? From the because toxins from just, the mother. You just shut them up full of vaccines, that's why. The, uh, okay. from the toxins from the mother. Okay, so that's what's cool. the first vaccine a baby gets? Oh, that's right. It's only vitamin K. Vitamin and, K is not a vaccine. Tylus, exactly, tylus. that's what I'm talking about. They don't get their first vaccine for a couple of weeks because their body can't get, handle it. They get hepatitis B immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, the vaccines that these guys are talking about, which is your influenza and shit, they don't start getting them until they're... Influenza isn't recommended until at least six months. We don't know how many parasites are in these vaccines, how much metal is in these vaccines, parasites. how many toxins are in these vaccines. Yeah, uh, Robin Goff was talking about piping, uh, um, parasite eggs out of the vaccines. Yes. <laughs> You're verbally dude. hearing this, man. If it's David, no, I I don't listen to David. Why would I listen to lemon. Shit he has to say? I like David. I like. I lemon. don't hear lemon for some reason. His volume is very low. Hello. Uh, for some I don't reason. have him muted. I like lemon. He's fun. He's not fun. Yes, he's he lying to your face and then spitting in your mouth, and you're like, "Oh, that's fun." You just don't want to believe it. It's not a lie just because you don't want to believe it. You're just in denial. Look at the testimonies from people that had uh, before and after stories of their children being fine before this vaccine, and after the vaccine, they're wrecked. Wake up. Wow. Yeah, man. Wake up. I have never had a side effect from a vaccine. Ever. Lemon has also it's... never had kids before. I did. Uh, just a bit. Just a bit. It's Russian roulette. The metal clumps in different um, Russian forms. Roulette. Russian roulette. <laughs> The polymorphous aluminum uh, clumps in different forms, so you might get a bit more in the vaccine than another, and there's no way to standardize what's going in the vaccines because of that clumping. Do you eat tuna? Do you eat tuna, like lemon? Hey, I, By I, what? I, I'm gonna Do you eat fish for, or tuna? I'm going to yeah. for them, guys. I mean, there's evidence. Look how much of an idiot demon is. I got a good idea. I got a good idea how you could do this. The next time you have one of these, you get a hundred people to volunteer to go sit inside of a house. Could be like a reality show. You got the infected in there with the others and see what happens. And you call me. That's unethical, right? And see how no, no, they volunteer. They volunteer and they get paid. No, for it, it, whether they volunteer or not, it's unethical. <laughs> I wouldn't be uh, if it's for net, if if it's for the good of the world. I mean, you could get a hundred people. Uh, it's for the good of MTV. Is this the people that argue against eugenics so badly? I mean, calling us commies and shit. Well, I mean, if it's, a, if, it's, if, if it's the flu, like if it's like the flu that somebody has that's going to the hospital and they and they're just figuring it out, why would you not just try to see how bad it gets? Everyone agree with David, so he quits talking. Well, the thing is, David, since God doesn't exist, we can make this form of ethics and do this like they did in Nazi Germany, because ethics are only for the members of society that contribute and help the society. Ethics is not for those people, you know, criminals, blacks, gays, women, you know, whoever. Yeah, ethics are born out of morals, that. Lemon. I agree with Lemon. Davos, stop interrupting, dude. Like, you wait, you don't wait until people's... Uh point is made like let him make his point first and then say something about it I, i'm done i tend to move on it's all good as long as i make one or two points feel, please feel free to cut in but thank you but, uh, morals and ethics morals. Come from, but morals and ethics come from god he gives us an eternal source of goodness god's god. morals are trash Andrew. Um, oh, uh, whose morals do you prefer? Satan's, Lucifer's, uh, the God that you worship? Uh, which one? Ramble, ramble, ramble. Jesus None of the above. Point, Lemon. Oh, you're talking about yourself. So you're the God that is out good God. Okay, 
Good luck out gooding God. I might go away. It's very easy to out good God because I don't commit genocides, people into slavery. Did you ever create a car that you wanted to recall and destroy? You just committed car genocide on that car that you created, just like God created man and can do with uh, man whatever he wants. There is no murder there because God's not accountable to anyone. I disagree. He's not. Yeah, a car is not a conscious feeling being, though. It's an inanimate object. So it just sounds like you want God to be accountable to your standard of morality. You want to be God. Case, case, case closed. Yeah, you want to be God. You want to outgood God and become God. Cars are not able to suffer. That doesn't matter. God's in a class all by himself, and he created yeah. us where he do with as he pleases. That the point absolutely is matters. If God is immoral, then he's not a good source of objective morality. But if God has a moral standard that he has to uphold that he's accountable to, he's no longer God. The thing that he's accountable to that made the thing that he's accountable to would be God. So your point becomes moot because at that point he's no longer God anyway. It destroys itself. Okay, so you said that your God's not God. Then. If he's accountable to something else, if he's sovereign God, and God, he would be accountable to himself. So God can be immoral, but that doesn't make his objective morality contradictory? Morality implies a standard that you're being held accountable to. The Bible doesn't say God is moral. It says God is good. There's a difference between that. You're equating morality and goodness. That's not necessarily the case. For somebody but who's in good old Nazi Germany, it may be moral to exterminate ridiculous. the lesser classes because you feel like uh, you're going to get a moral genetic purity as a moral thing to do. That's moral, but that's <laughs> so not that's just. Not that's not good. Not well, I mean, what you're saying definition. is that if God did what the Nazis did is just or ten times is what... worse than what the Nazis did, then it was morally right. Uh, you need to look up the word moral, look up the definition, because what you're saying is bad. Okay, then let's look it up right now. God does is good by virtue that God did it. But then, you know, what's, what's moral if that's the case? Nothing, right? Because if God does it, then it's automatically good. Morality. Regardless of... Go ahead, Lemon. No, no, please continue. Okay, but regardless of God's own actions, he prescribes certain morals that we find to be immoral, like slavery, like selling your daughter, like stealing women as plunder. But, but God didn't say, thou shalt enslave this person. It's yeah, more it like God worked with man's evil and said, if you're so hell-bent on evil, this is how you can do it to bring greater good eventually out of this evil. That's what I see more in the Bible than God saying, enslave people. The Bible also says that there's uh, freedom in Christ, that there's so freedom uh, uh, where the spirit of God is, there is freedom. So there's a, so a contradiction he, there. So he goes out of his way to tell people not to eat shellfish but not to not have slaves. Uh -huh. uh, hey, hey, Lemon, read your, read your definition. Whoever you serve becomes your master. If you serve your flesh, your flesh becomes your master. You are a slave to your flesh. If you serve the state, you become a slave to the state, and you, uh, the state becomes your master. If you serve God, God becomes your master, and I guess you become a servant, a slave, whatever, to God. And there's a difference between a slave and a servant. A slave has no rights. Servants did have How about I mean, the thing that doesn't make sense about what you're talking about is you're talking about slavery to sin, but you, but you don't like serving God. That doesn't make any sense. If you're willing to serve your flesh, then by extension, you should be willing to serve God. If you're willing to lose your life for the flesh, why not lose it for God? What it's a false dichotomy, as always. Hey, Lemon, I, I want you to read your definition. Read it out loud so you can fucking eat that crow. Uh, let me see. A block message. Here we go. Morality. <clears throat> Principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong or good and bad behavior. Guess who makes those rules? God. A particular system of values and principles of conduct, especially one held by a specified person or society. Hmm. The extent to which an action is right or wrong. Uh, so, oh, one held... Okay. 
Can you guys hear me? He kind of did that. The problem I have with that is, is what if the society determines that it's okay to go kill another society? Does that make it all of a sudden right? No, God determines what's right and what's wrong. No, no, no. no. I'm, 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 I know talking. you want. I know you wanted to, but you said morality had nothing to do with good or bad behavior. How does that crow taste? By the way, that's exactly what God did in many stories in the Bible. The only problem is you're trying to hold God accountable to something else, like something else is a God over God. At that point, he's no longer God, so your point destroys itself. Either God no. is God. It's like I said before, it's not about being accountable for your actions. It's about the morals that he prescribes for us. We don't follow them anymore because we've all realized that that book is Then you need to point to a more eternal source than God. If God is eternal and everything else is created, you're not going to find anything. How about so, just working for the good of the people? That just reduces down to what you want. Different people want different things. There are pedophiles that want to rape little kids. There are murderers that want to murder people. There are liars that want to lie. There are people that want to dishonor and uh, dis, uh, you know, disgrace everything. You know, who are we going to go with? We need to go with God's holy standard because he is good. Mankind is depraved. Mankind so needs you, help. So you want to go back to stoning disobedient children and selling women into slavery and not wearing want, mixed cloth God. and having slaves from from other countries, that's, that's my, all cool. I like my toys, mm -hmm. and I like a little bit of de uh, debauchery and depravity, but we need to get back to God nonetheless. Um, it was Which actually, one? It was that actually one? Christian ideals that led to us ending slavery, so it, you, what, you're, what you're talking about is not an accurate reflection of what the Bible uh, is actually in the Bible. It's, it's, Are you talking to me? Yeah, it's, an, inter it's an interpretation. Well, it's an interpretation that detractors of the Bible like to put onto the Bible, but w Christians don't believe in slavery, and they never did. But Do you want me to read Exodus, the text? Exodus twenty twenty one. Yeah, you want to read the text because it's quite clear. Really, you can in, beat in, your in, slave in, as long as they don't die in a day or two. Really, that's what Christians uh, believe. It's not a crime because the is, slave is your money. Is, no, is that what Christians listen. Believe? It's not the point about what Christians believe of, but no, if you're saying is. morality, listen, no, no be, on, what you're saying. Why do Christians not believe what the Old Testament teaches? Because they realize it's, it's an immoral Old book, so they chose to have their own subjective morality instead. That's not, what we should all not, be doing. It's not accurate, dude. It's it totally accurate. is. Because no, if, if you're going to say morality comes from the God of the Bible, then you need to go with that book. If you don't believe that those things are immoral and you want to make your own subjective values, then throw that fucking book away. It's not, it's not subjective. Yeah, it absolutely is. How do you pick and choose what morality from the Bible you use now and what you don't? Because we're Christians. We follow Christ. Yeah, we don't, but the Bible we don't, we're not Jews. You, the Bible tells we don't follow you Jewish slaves, teaching. where you can find your slaves, that's how all, much you should that's, pay for them, that's, that's how to all, trick people into becoming lifelong slaves, that, what are okay, the punishments if you Jake, slave to death. You going to let me talk or not? What you're being, what you're, what you're putting out right now, I'm telling you right now, I'm not guessing, I'm telling you, is critics of the Bible propaganda. It is it's not, really? it is not what, it's not what biblical scholars will tell you. So but until you're willing, until you're, no, it's, it is, it is, a, it is a Bible, it is a Bible the written, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible was written to a people in a certain context, in a certain time when slavery was a thing. Yes, slavery was a thing. That was the way of the world. Whenever you got conquered, you became a slave. That's how the world worked back then. So you that was okay? You can't, no, it's not okay. It, it is what Why happened. wasn't it? That's what was written in the Bible. Okay. Yeah, because it, it was written by men. It wasn't God saying, go and... Uh, Go and enslave everybody and and, and, and be evil. Do we no, need to read the okay. text? Should we take the text right now and read it word uh, for read, word and I've, see I've how read, you can I've interpret it? Otherwise? I've read the text. The people that they conquered, the people that they conquered became slaves. No, it's not all about conquering. Uh, it also says you can simply purchase foreign slaves and you can treat them with rigor. Word for word. It's not an interpretation. It's clear as fucking day. 
in every translation, mm-hmm. in the Hebrew, in the Greek, it just is. We can yeah. go through the text so, right now, so and you can show me so how it says that, thing that people did back then. I totally so, agree. like I said before, why did he bother to say "don't eat shellfish," but he didn't bother to say "don't have slaves"? The one one of the curious things is why did he? he that there's actually knowledge inside of that, right? There's actually knowledge of "don't eat shellfish." Why should people not eat shellfish? Why does that make any sense? Is that a moral thing? No, it's stupid, irrelevant shit that men wrote thousands of years ago. No, it wasn't. Shellfish would kill people back then because it was... Shellfish would kill people today if it wasn't raised correctly because they're bottom dwellers. It, he, was teach, he was giving them practical knowledge about how to live in the world that they were in. And how to have slaves, yeah. Never mind. You're, you're, you're not going to get it. You're not willing to open your mind to the fact that these were people living in a certain culture and you are now trying to judge them based on yes. based on your standards today. But it's everyone's live. standard. Yeah, it's everyone's standard. We all know that that's the moral. Not just a book for that period. It's supposed exactly. to be for all humanity. For Says who? Says who, Jake? Says the book. Says what it's book? It's God's word, man. It's more than one book, dude. It's yeah, many I, books. I it's a many full of Jews. Just a single book in the Bible. It's, it's a book. Of, it's a whole bunch of different books written by a whole bunch of different. Okay, people. so why don't you just throw away the Old Testament then? I basically don't agree with anything did. The Old I basically Testament. Did. Did. That's exactly what I did. Okay, yeah, so but, why is it still contained together? But, well, okay. Because King the Old Testament, Testament elucidates the New Testament and makes it a whole story. It's because King James put it together. That's why it's together. No, he didn't. The King James Version Bible? Yes, he did. No, he no it's didn't. just a translation. No, it's not. No, it's Before not. It's a collection that... of different manuscripts all put together. It's yeah, not, the manuscripts all were not word. divided into verses word. and lines that came later. So the book was compiled in a different way later before it was just a bunch of manuscripts writing down what the prophets got from God. Okay, so where does it say throw away the old book? Because Jesus said he was there to uphold the law, not to change a tittle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, the and, Jesus, and, G- and Jesus created a New Testament, right? It's new. It's a new... But he said, Jesus, he, said he was there to uphold the old law. He was there he to did uphold, uphold the old he law. He did uphold the law. He upheld so the law. So slavery is still we, cool then. We are not... So we are not going to uphold the law. We can't. Yeah, You're just that's, what in the New that's what Christian freedom is. Christian freedom is, by definition, that we are free from the law by Jesus' sacrifice. Masters. We are, we are living under a different your contract. Masters. So Christian. you're picking and choosing based no, on your own no, subjective morality. That's not correct. We are living under a different contract by the book itself. The book itself says... That Christians are living under a different contract. We are not subject to the law any longer. Jesus says in the New Testament, slaves obey your earthly masters. Okay. So slavery is still cool in the New Testament. No, it's not cool. Do you think Jesus would say that slavery was cool today? Yeah, he said lots of fucked up. No, he wouldn't. Okay, so again, why don't you throw away the Old Testament then? I just, said I, I just said I do. What church do you go to where they don't use the Old Testament? What? I don't use the Old Testament. So what, what church do you go to? Do they use the Old Testament? Uh, I don't go to a specific church. What about when okay, God so you're just choosing your own? Sorry, no, I'm, I'm reading the Bible, and I'm following the New Testament. I'm following Jesus. Because okay, I'm, so I'm a Christian, which means a follower of Jesus. Yeah, just a just a quick thing. I want you to write down how many times in the Gospels of Peter, Luke, John, where they actually say the same fucking thing. The Old Testament elucidates. Let me. Can you just stop, like, interrupting for a second, so I can like have a conversation with these people? You've been talking this entire day. The other thing is, I I I, I think it's Peter. Actually talks about slavery. Uh, also, yeah. other things you need to look at is why it was that King James left out certain books in his version. What What are you talking about? They said the same exact thing. What are you talking about? Said what did they say? Well, they they 
they talk about the same thing of Jesus death and burial and resurrection but certain contradictions happen between the gospels of those four apostles no they're they're different um, perspectives on the same story basically they do contradict each other though but I, one I know says you think there was that, three women mm. one says three women one says one woman mm -hmm. okay, two, two another one scenes. says that most most general criminals were thrown in a ditch and why was it that someone paid for Jesus to be put in a tomb? Well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, someone have to pay for Jesus to be put in a tomb. What was he going to profit from for that fact? Was it going to get him a ticket into heaven? Probably not. But he did it anyway. I mean, th that's the contradiction, somebody, right? Somebody yeah, only paid, one of the books tells paid. you about the person who bought the tomb. So what? But I can have four the... different people watch a car wreck and have four different stories. What are you talking about? Oh, no. Yeah, the car got wrecked, right? So you're telling me that there's an apostle that says Jesus didn't die? Well, hang on. You, you've got these guys saying he rose from the dead, yet none of them saw it. What are you talking about, dude? They, saw, they all saw him after the fact. No, but did they see him rise from the dead? They saw him dead, then they saw him alive afterwards. So they didn't see the actual process by which he came back to life. Why would that matter? Because that's the evidence that's missing. Yeah, well. No one's going to be yeah, in the tomb with him. Anyway, anyway, anyway you, have to, you have to believe I mean, Being opinion. in the tomb with him, it's like being in the coffin with him. And yeah, waiting yeah. to watch him come back to life. It's um, if, if, if I saw somebody that I knew that was laying in front of me dead, I knew they were dead, beat up, bloody, they're bleeding all over the place. They're dead. They're obviously, we put them in the grave, and then tomorrow they're walking around. I'm going to believe that they came back from the dead. I mean, oh, I like that you believe, but you don't know. Of course you believe. What do you think uh, faith is? Uh, <laughs> none, none of the apostles, no, though, were first witnesses of the resurrection. Do, do you think, wait, hold on. Are you under the in, uh, perception that Christians think they have a deductive proof of Jesus Christ being the Son of God? Well, that's the thing. Jesus says you guys are actually following the wrong God. What? Yeah. Like, have you heard of Sakla? No one before? comes to the father except through jesus christ that's what he ah but you've heard of sakla before no i don't know who sakla is s a look him up why like if you're, if you're being theological about this right you know there's other stories about certain things jesus did apart from what you've read in your king james version Oh, are you a Mormon? What? So are you a Mormon? Are you speaking about Mormons right now? Why the hell would I speak about Joseph Smith? No. We're talking about so you are books from 180 CE. Around the same time the other Gospels were written. Prior to Nicaea. So you don't think Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? If those, oh, with that. Those stories of the resurrection, none of them are firsthand. They were, they were. I think the earliest one was like seventy years after the supposed time the resurrection. The resurrection. Those aren't. First That's better than other historical documents that we that, accept. That was the that was the first manuscript, or that's the oldest manuscript that we found, but that. Doesn't mean that was the first writings or the first well, we, records. No, we believe that we believe that's the time. No, no, that's not accurate. We believe that's the time the earliest author lived, not the date of the oldest manuscript. No, it's the date of the oldest manuscript that survived that we had no, at not. the time of King James. Yes, it is. That's the oldest. The oldest manuscript that we had at the time of King James was from seventy A.D. Doesn't mean there wasn't more before that. It just we didn't have it. It just didn't survive. And in the stories, as they spread out across 
are all very, very identical. Like they're 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 identical. So they had to come from a common manuscript. It's not like it's not like uh, you know they had sixteen different stories and they all were different. It's like the same manuscript had obviously been copied and spread out all over the place. No, but a bunch of different stories that disagree with each other is exactly what we wound up with. No, we didn't. All of the Gospels are different. In what way? Uh, they all, seven, all different, seven, they, seven different authors writing, I mean, uh, four different authors writing uh, the same, uh, about the same accounts are going to have differences. What are you talking about? Okay, so so you, out of, at the same time you just said we all have the same shit, so it must have came from the same source, and then you say it's all going to differ because we have different sources. So which one is it? All, all, all four of those authors had out all over the place. They're all written and they spread out all over the place, and they were different from the beginning, spread all over the place. But all the different copies of it were the same. They were like ninety ninety nine point nine percent similar. So they're all different, but the copies of the differences are accurate. You think that matters? Dude, the trivial differences that you're talking about are not this big deal that you're making it out to be. I, I actually don't. I actually don't think it's a big deal either. I just think you're contradicting. No, I'm not. Listen to what I'm saying. Four guys sit down, you. write four different books, and then one person takes all four of those books and copies it over and over and over again, spreads it out. I'm not contradicting myself. I don't see what your point is. If you're saying they're accurate, but they're different, I don't see how that's not a contradiction. Because we're talking about the origin. Okay, I have four different video cameras for recording the same scene. They're all they would record exactly the same. Yeah, they're all different. No, they would. They'd see it at different angles. They could see different people that you can't see from a different different angle. It would be different. Each each video would be slightly different. Those are different, and they're all accurate. You're talking about no, they would get they would get the chronology of events exactly correct. argue with you, you 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 want to disbelieve okay. no i already disbelieve i just want to show that <laughs> what you believe is stupid well of course you do because, because it's clear so better about it's your just it's okay. it couldn't be more obvious that those are books written by men it could it couldn't be more obvious of course they're books written by men i know the, the, wow. is whether i don't disagree with you. i don't disagree that but, they are written by men but you, you think they're the inspired word of god Wait, they were they were inspired by God to write. It okay. doesn't mean they're doesn't mean they're writing for God. Okay, so how much of the Old Testament is God's words, and how much of it is the words of men? It was all written by men. What do you mean? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so how often are they misinterpreting what God's? Yeah, but I'm going to say something because obviously you don't know who soundly is. Um, he's not one of these fundamentalist die-hard Christians. Um, so, I, you know, attacking his belief is kind of fucking retarded. Whether he's Christian or not, you know, like, the guy is still a good person. Who ever said he wasn't a good person? Well, you uh, just sound like a, what, he, a, what he believes is ahead. stupid. Well, I do think that it's a stupid no. Belief no, that's okay. I don't mean it's okay. It doesn't mean I think he's a bad that's person. That's fine. I don't take offense to that. A lot of people think he's stupid. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a... that's what what I don't like a person. Across the board. It happens when you have our left arguing with the in politics. It happens whenever uh, pro abortion versus pro pro life argue with each other. Is that people start mischaracterizing and start twisting words and stuff like that instead of just having an honest conversation. That's what I don't like. Let's just have a conversation. I was trying to. If I misinterpreted or mischaracterized your words, I apologize. That wasn't my intention. I just think that the whole thing is foolish. I don't think that you're a bad person. I don't think yeah, that well, you have to change your mind. I just, If we're having a conversation, I'm going to state how I really feel. Yeah. The, the thing is, is that when you say things like that, um, that you say you think it's foolish. The thing is, is that the Bible actually says that you will say that. Oh, they got me. It was a prophecy. No, I'm just saying it, it's it's speaking to a deeper truth about 
it, for you to call it foolish is just saying you, basically you're just providing evidence to Christians that you're 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 simply not believing it because you don't want to believe it for whatever personal reasons. Yeah, it has not nothing to do with the actual thing. If anybody writes a book saying a guy put a bunch of animals on a boat during a flood and then says people will think this is foolish, that ain't prophecy. This is obvious. All right. The, are you a are you a believer in the, uh, the? Do I think that there was a story uh, that was relayed through multiple cultures? all over the planet about a family that got on a boat with animals. So you think yeah. it's a, it's a, I think it's based, the ep- epic I, think it, I think it's based on some historical event that occurred, not to say that it's a, a, a flood that in, flooded the entire globe. Uh, I don't know if okay. we actually know that or not. Did they so actually have mostly- every animal on the, on the boat? Uh, probably not. So you think was, it's most was there, was there a family that actually lived that, did survive a flood on a gigantic boat and had their farm animals on it, I say at a minimum that probably happened. Just because there's so many different stories around the world of it happening. So there was probably a guy in a boat in a flood, but not Noah's Ark, the story. Well, that's where the Noah's Ark story came from, is what I'm saying. Well, that's not what the Noah's Ark story is, though. The Noah's Ark is very specific, and it has a lot more than a guy in a boat in a flood. I'm not sure what you're getting at. Well, I'm just asking if you think that it's mostly figurative. No, I think it's based on an actual event that occurred. The The facts in the Bible might not be exactly perfectly accurate. That would make it figurative, would it not? Mm, no, not really. So when they say he took two of every animal in the world onto a boat for a year when the entire world was flooded... That's what, an exaggeration or figurative language? Well, we don't know. Um, we don't know what the author meant by that. That's one thing. Like, what is the world from the author's perspective? What is every animal from the author's perspective? It's a lot of things that we just don't know. We read into it, and we read in this modern-day man's idea of what that story is telling us, and we don't exactly know what the author was saying at the time. What about the exact dimensions of the boat? What about the exact dimensions of the boat? Well, he wasn't vague when he said how big the boat is. Yeah, exactly how big the boat is. That would be a humongous fucking boat. Yeah, he should. Well, it took him like 150 years to build or something like that. Okay, so you... So you don't think that's figurative? You think it literally was a guy building a boat that size? I, when you say, do I think it's figurative, how can, how can any of us actually know? I'm just wondering what you believe. Well, I'm like any skeptic. I'm open-minded to the facts, and I, we don't have enough facts to make a decision or conclusion. So you don't think it's reasonable to conclude that Nobody ever built a boat that big out of wood and sailed for a year with a shitload of animals that you, they somehow fed, even the meat eaters, and, and had fresh water, and then re- repopulated the world with eight people? You don't think that that's pretty obviously not? I don't think it's reasonable to take the modern-day kid's version of the book, of the story, uh, and think that you... You take you're basically taking some like um, exaggerative version of the story, and then you're. What part? I don't, I don't what did think I get it wrong? That's the way. What did I get wrong? I don't with? think that's the way it went down. Um, okay. What did I say that wasn't in the book? It's not that it's not in the book. It's the book. The book might be relaying a story that. But it's relaying the story from the author's perspective, from whatever, their, their history, their ancestors who told them the story. We don't know exactly what the author was intending, first of all. And second of all, we don't know that the author got all the details right. What? Let me just take a step back really quick. What part of the Bible do you find convincing that it could be true? Uh, I think all of it has some uh, basis of truth. And probably 
probably we have uh, not enough information to interpret it correctly. Oh, yeah, I understand that you think most of it's true. I was just wondering why you think most of it's true. I don't. Sorry, I don't know sorry. I had to go shut the door because my dogs are going crazy. What'd you that's say? Cool. I just, I was wondering why you find it to be compelling that it's probably true. I don't. In my epistemology, I, think, I don't think I could ever get to the Bible being true. So it starts with, um, first of all, I think there has to be an intelligent force that created everything. So that, that's the first thing. So then. I also, th also think that the story of Jesus Christ is very critical, uh, credible based on historical documentation. Okay. So those are like the opposite ends of the story, right? God created yeah. everything. Jesus Christ came to save us for our sins. And okay. since I think those two things are credible, every, everything in the middle, I, I, have to, I have to like basically say, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. I have no idea what the author actually means. I don't, I don't know anything about this stuff. I don't know if it's actually accurate. I don't know if it, you know, was preserved by God or not. It's just stuff that uh, varying sects of uh, Christianity have concluded along the way. Not, okay, not, to, so not to say that I di uh, disagree or, or agree with them. I don't have enough information to, to do either, and neither does anybody so basically, else. Basically, you got the plausibility of your creator, 